Welcome to Review Central's Midwifery Licensure Exam Reviewer No. 10, featuring questions on care of infants and children. This reviewer is specifically prepared for the Midwifery Licensure Examination, given by the Board of Midwifery, and administered by the Professional Regulation Commission of the Philippines. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous Midwifery Licensure Exams. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Question number one. The right technique of bathing a two-day-old neonate is A. Do a tub bath complete with hair shampoo. B. Use shower or bidet to wash the body and hair completely. C. Do only a tub of the body and avoid the hair shampoo until the cord is off. D. Do only a sponge bath with hair shampoo since the cord is still on. The correct answer is D. Do only a sponge bath with hair shampoo since the cord is still on. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends sponge baths until the umbilical cord stump falls off which might take a week or two. To give a baby a sponge bath, you'll need a warm place with a flat surface. A bathroom or kitchen counter, changing table, or firm bed will work. Question number two. In assessing the psychomotor development of an eight-month-old baby, you will normally expect to find that the latest activity that the baby can do now is a. Crawl B. Sit and support C. Stand alone D. Walk alone The correct answer is B. Sit and support An 8-month-old baby is normally expected to already be able to sit and support itself. In addition, at 8 months old, the baby likely weighs around 8.6 kilos, if boy, or 7.7 .7 kilos, if girl starts to use a raking grasp that soon progresses to a pincher grasp. Eats more solids, but still needs half of daily calories from breast milk or formula. Sleeps 13 to 14 hours a day, including 2 to 3 naps. Explores the world through taste and touch. Question number 3. Infancy is a period characterized by a. Period of rapid growth B. Period for developing autonomy in the child C. Period for developing initiative in the child D. Period for instilling good morals and right conduct on the child The correct answer is A. Infancy is a period characterized by rapid growth of the child. Infancy encompasses only a fraction of the average person's expected lifespan, but infancy is characterized by remarkable physiological, physical, and psychological changes, many of which are evident even on casual observation. Question number 4. Infant begin to have social smile at what age? A. As early as one week. B. 2 weeks C. 8 weeks D. 16 weeks The correct answer is C. 8 weeks. A baby's first social smile usually appears by the end of their second month. That's one reason why pediatricians, midwives, nurses, and health workers always take great pleasure in seeing babies and their parents at the two-month-old checkup. Question number 5. You observe a one-day-old neonate to have ecteric sclerae in skin. Your correct assessment about this condition is A. This is only a physiological jaundice B. This is only the baby is NPO after birth C. The baby is suffering from a possible blood type incompatibility D. The baby is infected with rubella virus The correct answer is C. The baby is suffering from a possible blood type incompatibility. 
Although neonatal jaundice is very common, a blood type incompatibility between the mother and baby is also a reason to track the newborn's jaundice more closely. This exists when a mother has the blood type O and therefore has antibodies against A and B cells, and her newborn is of blood type A or B. This may cause the newborn's red blood cells to break down more quickly due to maternal antibodies that have leaked into the baby's bloodstream. A blood type incompatibility also exists if the mother has a rhesus, Rh, factor negative blood type and the newborn is Rh factor positive. This had been a common cause of severe neonatal jaundice, but is now very uncommon because Rh immune globulin, Roam, is given to mothers at risk before delivery. Question number 6. After feeding, the mother is taught to do which action to prevent tympanums in the baby? A. Burp the baby. B. Place the baby on the crib with head turned to the side. C. Put the baby on prone position. D. Shake the baby by dancing or vigorous motion of the mother while carrying the baby. The correct answer is A. Burp the baby. An important part of feeding a baby is burping. Burping helps to get rid of some of the air that babies tend to swallow during feeding. Not being burped often and swallowing too much air can make a baby spit up, or seem cranky or gassy. When burping the baby, repeated gentle patting on the baby's back should do the trick. Cup your hand while patting, this is gentler on the baby than a flat palm. Question number 7. Which of the following layman's practices regarding cord care needs to be avoided to prevent infection? A. Wash the cord dressing every after use. B. Iron the cord dressing before use. C. Apply an abdominal binder to keep the cord dressing in place. D. Apply a 1 peso coin over the cord to prevent hernia. The correct answer is D. Apply a 1 peso coin over the cord to prevent hernia. This old layman's practice of putting or applying a 1 peso coin over the cord to prevent hernia is unsanitary and has no medical basis. It is actually a highly potential cause of infection. Question number 8. The umbilical cord is normally expected to fall off after how many days? A. 3 days. B. 7 days. C. More than 15 days. D. More or less 30 days. The correct answer is B. The umbilical cord is normally expected to fall off after 7 days. The umbilical cord, sometimes referred to simply as cord or stump, should dry and fall off by the time a baby is 5 to 15 days old, usually after 7 days. Question number 9. A mother asked you why her baby had thick vernix caesosa. Which of the following statements is a correct explanation for this? A. The mother had frequent sexual intercourse during the late pregnancy leading to the semen collection seen as vernix caesosa. B. Vernix caesosa is produced by the sebaceous glands as protective covering for the baby's skin. C. Thick vernix caesosa is a sign of post-maturity. D. All of these? The correct answer is B. Vernix caesosa is produced by the sebaceous glands as protective covering for the baby's skin. Vernix caesosa is a white, creamy, naturally occurring biofilm covering the skin of the fetus during the last trimester of pregnancy. Vernix coating on the neonatal skin protects the newborn skin and facilitates extra uterine adaptation of skin in the first postnatal week if not washed away after birth. Question number 10. To prevent nipple irritation when breastfeeding, mothers are taught about proper technique of breastfeeding which is to A. Let the baby latch on at the nipple and only to ensure a good suck. B. Let the baby latch on the nipple to include more than half of the areola. C. Let the baby suck the nipple as long as he likes. D. None of these. The correct answer is B. Let the baby latch on the nipple to include more than half of the areola. 
The mother would know if her baby has a good latch when her baby's chin is touching her breast and he can breathe through his nose. His mouth is open wide and he has a mouthful of his mother's areola, not just the nipple. This is the position and latch that best prevents nipple irritation. You have just completed midwifery licensure exam reviewer number 10, which featured questions on care of infants and children. If you wish to watch more midwifery licensure exam reviewers on care for infants and children, check out our midwifery care of infants and children or infant care and feeding reviewers playlist. Check out also our other midwifery playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share it to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming midwifery licensure exam, and we look forward to your fulfilling career and professional life as a licensed midwife and healthcare provider in the Philippines. Mabu hi! Yeah. Yeah.